All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be a pretty cool one. We're actually gonna be helping a fellow YouTuber. So some of you guys, actually I'd probably say the majority of my subscribers actually already follow this guy, but if not, I'll go and link his channel up there. His name is Lawrence LT Tolman. So a lot of you guys are gonna know him as he used to be the TV host for a show called Truck Tech. And now he's developed an awesome YouTube channel where he does a lot of how to's on GM pickup trucks. So he's got a truck that he calls Project Ugly Truck, which is a turbocharged 8.1 liter big block. He has recently added a camshaft and just kind of freshened up the engine, added some ring gap, things like that. He also went through and kind of did his own little port work, I guess you'd call it, to his intake manifold. So he contacted me today. He shot me over a text saying, hey, you know, working on shooting on the truck and I would like for you to help me look at the data logs and we'll do some troubleshooting. So me and LT, we've worked together several times. I helped him tune his Project Copo truck. Some of you guys may have known it was a little orange step side truck. I helped him tune it when it was natural aspirated and then I walked him through tuning advice on how to tune it with LSA and he had that thing freaking dialed in. It was it was, it was awesome. So this is actually the first time I get to help him with 8.1. So let's go ahead on and pull up his tune file and pull up the data log and see what we can spot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up his tune file. So if you guys haven't done this before, hopefully you've seen this on the channel already, but if not, we just open up our HP Tuners VCM editor, but I'll go into my downloads and this is Ugly Truck Flex Tune 004 Closed Loop. So this is the current tune file that we are working with. So then I'm gonna open up my scanner and we're gonna pull up his data log. Now when I'm doing a remote tune or helping remotely, I am relying on the channels that the customer is using like for themselves. So some of his channels, most of them may job with what I usually have but some of them aren't, but that's okay. We should have enough data here to actually get this thing done. So we're gonna open up his data log and we're gonna look at this closed loop bank one versus bank two separating. So his issue is when he runs a truck in closed loop, he sees this drastic difference in short-term fuel trim. So one will go plus 30, the other one will go negative 30. And he hasn't changed anything. He hasn't, he's cleaned up the wiring, but he hasn't changed any wiring. Sensors are the same, sensor location is the same. So we've got to diagnose his closed loop issue. So we're going to open up this data log and basically I have everything graphed out to where we should be able to pinpoint this issue pretty easily. So what I'm going to be looking at today is first we're going to look at those auction sensor millivolts. So I've got these millivolts right here. We're going to run this and we're actually going to play this in the data log. So we've got short term fuel trims down here, O2 sensor millivolts right here. So again, this is in closed loop. So we're gonna see some fuel trims move around. Now again, he's just starting the tuning process on this. So let's go ahead on and I'm gonna set this data log up to, let's see, we got a five minute long data log. So let's set this up to two times speed and let's play it. So right now our scanner is going through, this is live data. Now obviously this is in two times speed, but this is data from his vehicle. So instead of us just scrolling along the bottom, we can actually play this. So we can actually play this at a 1x speed and basically be like we're actually like hanging out with him, you know? So right now, fuel trims are looking okay. Looks like the truck's trending a little bit lean, but nothing crazy. I'm noticing bank one, sensor one. Actually, let me pause this. So bank one, sensor one is switching pretty rapidly. Looks like bank two is being a little lazy. So where are we at? Okay, so coolant temp's already at 180. So this sensor really should already be warmed up. Let's just keep going. And as I'm looking, yeah, I mean, his fuel trims, we got, you know, plus 21 on bank one and negative seven, eight on bank two. And as we're looking through here, we'll stop this again. You're going to notice his auction sensor on bank one, which I believe is on his crossover, the turbo crossover, is actually moving around quite a bit. Bank two is not. So bank two on his configuration, I believe, is actually in his downpipe. So it's got a little bit, or it's, it's actually sensing both banks. Traditionally, this doesn't actually cause issue. A lot of the on three turbo kits, some of the, I think, trick turbo kits, some of them will actually have them set up where you've got your driver's side sensor and the crossover pipe under the vehicle, and then you've got your passenger side narrow band and your wide band in the downpipe. So right here, we're just gonna pretty much call this as, uh, I think he's just gonna need a sensor, honestly. So we'll keep playing this and look through. Field trims kind of start to come back together. You'll see that, looks like the sensor just intermittently will kind of start switching. But this, I mean, the driver's side sensor looks great. This bank one sensor one, it'd be driver's side upstream. It's switching just like it's supposed to. But yeah, this bank two sensor one is not really switching like it's supposed to. I believe the sensor is working, but we may actually have a heater, like a heater issue. Okay, so it looks like he's getting into a little bit of, of RPM here. So we'll see, we're at 130-ish KPA. So we're at like five pounds or so. We can see the converter come up here and tug down i'm assuming this is going to be lock up okay no so i guess it's just a converter coupling air fuel wise i mean he's safe he's a little bit rich but he's safe 
truck goes in an open loop just like it's supposed to. So yeah, all that stuff looks good. I mean, he's not running any type of crazy timing or crazy boost right now. He's super conservative like I am where he's going to start off slow and then he'll gradually turn it up from there, which is always a good sign. So let's continue to play this thing, but I think we've pretty much got this thing diagnosed down to it needs a passenger side upstream oxygen sensor. Now, it must be a heater bag because now you'll, you'll notice that this sensor is starting to get to where it's switching more and more, especially after he put some RPM through there. I think that's what we've got going on. So anytime you guys are, are working on oxygen sensors on a GM product, the best place to get them is going to be anywhere that carries NTK as the brand. The Bosch sensors don't really work real well in these applications. So NTK, I think Denso was the actual OE manufacturer, but NTK... I mean, their sensors are, are really solid and they're very, very equivalent or maybe even spot on to what OE would have had. But, and usually the NTK sensors are a little bit cheaper than Bosch. Now, a lot of times like places like O'Reilly's won't have them in stock, but usually they can get them almost same day from their warehouse. But that's what it looks like. It looks like we've got an oxygen sensor issue on the heater. As it's warming up, let's pause this thing. So as we're starting to get to switching, he's still got some pretty heavy fuel trims. So it's switching now, but the fuel trims are still pretty far off. So I'm also going to recommend to him that he smoke test this thing. So that's going to help him check for injector O-ring leaks, intake leaks, anything like that. He's had this entire engine apart and you know he's done some new fuel rails on it. So it's, it's very possible that maybe the injectors are angled to where he pay, may have an O-ring leaking. He also, the injectors that are in this truck, had sat all winter time. Now they were in Ziploc bags, but he did not clean them out. So they actually sat with ethanol in them over the winter time. So it also could be injectors that need to be cleaned. We know for sure that he's got his passenger side sensor is lazy. So that's going to be a, you know, $50 fix or so that is, it's, it's something that it needs to be addressed, but it may not completely resolve the issue. But that's the whole point of, of when I'm tuning, you know, a lot of things that I'm looking at is I want to look at the things that we can replace that even if it doesn't solve our entire issue, it at least solves a problem. So you always want to diagnose things, these things to where you want to fix anything that you know for a fact is broken because you'd be surprised at how some of this stuff coincides together. So otherwise everything else looks okay. So let's pull up the tune file and we just kind of glance through his tune file. So he kind of, he was talking about, you know, do something like a rate my tune. Obviously he's got cylinder volume correct. It is an 8.1 liter big block. His idle stuff looks pretty good. I actually taught him how to do short term idle trims a long time ago. So all this stuff, we'll switch this over to grams per second. But he's, he's got this stuff pretty, pretty well dialed in. This thing's got a really small camshaft in there. So it's not gonna take a whole lot of idle. So all this stuff looks good. Gonna roll into airflow versus frequency. Okay, so this is one thing I can have him do. So anytime you guys are working on speed density where the mass airflow sensor doesn't exist, it's always on startup, it's going to look at the lowest point of mass airflow sensor frequency because it is seeing in the data law, we can pull this up, where it's seeing zero hertz. So the lowest thing in his tune is gonna be 1500 hertz. So right here, I mean, he can put in a grams per second that the truck would idle at. So we can actually pull up his idle and actually, let's pull up his open loop data log. So he said an open loop data log. So that's this drive one right here. So let's see if we can find a good idle spot. All right, so here's idle. And we can look at dynamic airflow. We're at 13.45 grams per second. He could probably do something like 16 and a half grams per second. And what he would do is he would just do something like this. So he just type in 16 and a half. And again, make sure we're in grams per second. But when he puts this in, that's going to give the ECU a reference to start off with until it fails the mass airflow sensor. So that's one thing that he can do in the tune. So we're gonna go ahead on and we'll pull up his VE table. Okay, it looks pretty solid. It looks like it's, he's still roughing it in obviously because he is using EQ error, but he's actually, I mean, he's doing some work. It's kind of rough right now, but that's the point of tuning is when you're VE tuning, you kind of rough everything in and then you can kind of smooth and work as you go because we are gonna have some transport delay from the wide band, from basically from the, the wide band to the ECU, then from the ECU into the HP tuners, you know, so we're gonna have some fluctuations in data. So some of these exact points may not be exactly where the ECU needs a fuel change. So that's that's where smoothing comes into play. So his VE table's looking good, primary VE. Honestly, it looks a touch rich. It looks like he may could take some off of this cranking VE, but cranking VE is one of those where you can look at your main VE table. So let's pull back up his main VE table. Okay, so all these numbers look relatively low. So I'm gonna say he could probably also take a little bit off of cranking VE and it'd probably help it fire off a little bit better. So that looks good, stoic. Okay, so he's got stoic set up for flex fuel. Flex fuel enabled? 
flex fuel showing enabled, but the data log under alcohol percent, I believe I saw in here, okay. So alcohol percent is slowly coming up. So I'll actually talk to him on the phone and figure it out. Because if we look in his other data log, alcohol percent is at zero. So depending on the ethanol content, he may have been making changes with the incorrect stoic to his alcohol percentage. So that's one thing we'll talk to him about as well. Timing wise, let's see if he's got this thing scaled yet. Now, if I remember right, this truck, he wasn't scaling it before. Okay, yeah, so we're not scaled on this. So that means he's basically, whenever when the truck comes up in a boost, it's just gonna follow this line down here. And so it's just gonna max out at 1.2 grams of cylinder air mass, and it's gonna run this table. So pretty much no matter how much boost he's on, this is the table he's gonna run on. Let's check low octane. Okay, so he has low octane active as well. So that's gonna mess with him right now because when you do speed density, let's see, okay, so he's in the speed density operating system. So the truck should be learning high octane and low octane, so that's good. Here's his flex fuel timing table. I don't believe it was referencing it, honestly pull back up to where he was getting into boost. All right, so we're at 1.38 cylinder air mass. We've got a knock learn factor of, that's right in front of my face, 0.48. So it's gonna be splitting between high octane and low octane. High octane is here. All right, so let's see. We got 5,276 RPM. So we're gonna be looking at this. So we got 13 degrees at the bottom of this one. And we've got 8.48 degrees in the bottom of this one and we have an actual of 11 and a half degrees. So if you guys notice that because our knock learn factor is 0.48, we're basically half. So that's why this timing number is actually between, it's almost directly in between the high octane and low octane table. So it's doing its job, but it's not referencing the flex fuel table. As long as it's using the flex fuel table for fueling, he may actually have to make a high octane and low octane E85 table and ignore the flex fuel table in his operating system because otherwise we may have to go into the binary file and enable some other things to make this flex fuel table active. I have had several operating systems at this where the flex fuel table didn't actually work. Okay, so we can go through, let's see, burst knock. He's still got it active, so he can actually take that out. If you want to disable burst knock, which I highly recommend, on any type of performance LS as long as you're dialing in the timing. You just bring up this, so we'll click this, we're under spark, retard, and then burst knock retard, enable delta cylinder air. He can just make this like something that's above whatever cylinder air mass he's gonna be at, which this thing's gonna move some airflow. So you can just type in like a three or something and that would get him resolved there. Torque management, he's got all this stuff pretty well maxed out, which we have to do on this truck. Even the, the Copo truck, once he added the LSA blower on there, he was maxing out these tables. So he just like, we had them basically set the factory and even though it was in a spot where it wouldn't have looked like it was going to max out the torque management table, he was getting a lot of torque management to go to lay into it. So he's just got in the habit of maxing these out, and that's completely fine. If you notice how the highest number, if you look down in the right corner, the highest number will be 41,943,040 foot-pounds. If you notice how he's got it at 039, that means it's not completely maxed out, which is always good. Abuse mode looks good. Let's go into the system tab and go to general and see if brake torque management is off, and it is. So, I mean, yeah, everything else is looking good. He's got the AC set to disable. So all of his settings that I'm seeing so far look great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give LT this data and he will give us some feedback and we'll go through another data log. Maybe not in this video, it just kinda depends on when he gets back to me. It's currently 4.24 p.m. Central Time and he is on, I believe, Mountain Time. So we'll see how much he can actually knock out today. So I will get back to you guys.